Okay. All right. Uh, so roadmap. Wed roadmap. That was a big one. So when shelling wed roadmap and wed ro when roadmap has been answered. It came out this week. There was it was a very nice uh, improvement to the roadmap that I saw in there. I've seen a lot of questions on Twitter where people say, uh, "Does it show which quarter? Does it show which year?" What they people may not have caught was that colored line graph on there. So maybe somewhere we would start from is uh, how did you guys? construct this new roadmap the old one was very detailed and it had three columns and you had to drill you could drill down there was a lot of detail and a lot of complexity to it how did you uh determine this simplified one did you hire some high-end engineer out there or did you guys no, get together no, no. And I'll, I'll kind of i'll kind of talk about the high level goals and then since david was the the guy who delivered most of the content and put a lot of the structure together uh he can take uh, particulars um so you know, a roadmap is a reflection ultimately of the philosophy of how something is built and the overall organizational knowledge and the project management system that you're following to build that thing. So when we first started Cardano, we kind of had a view of what we wanted to do. And, and a lot of this was high risk, high return and very aspirational R&D and, and development efforts. So we kind of knew where the cryptocurrency market was at. We knew where re the state of the art was research was at. We knew where the, the existing code bases were at. And we had a, a lot of knowledge from this. And then we just went out and started doing stuff. Like we developed uh, a formal specification for UTXO accounting. And then we figured out a way to make UTXO and Ethereum style accounts live on the same ledger and be able to move value between them. We figured out how to proof of stake work. We figured out how to do side chains. We did a huge amount of research into programming language theory. And unfortunately, the old way of doing things was percentages and, and various quarters. And what ended up happening was that things that we thought were simple weren't as simple as we wanted them to be. Uh, processes that we were following, particular engineers that we were working with, just didn't turn out to be the right fit for what we were trying to deliver. And so we had to, over time, make changes. And over time, we learned basically how to deliver something like this to market. So what ended up happening was that the old roadmap uh, compared to the project management, the product management, the actual product delivery process had gotten out of sync with each other to an extent where things like the percentages weren't so meaningful. And it was, it was uh, more like a waterfall process uh, that we had prior. Uh, now we're more agile. So we said, let's just take a big step back. And first, let's try to simplify everything, philosophically speaking. And let's break it down into eras. And in each and every one of them has kind of a reason to exist. And it does something. So the first, obviously, was Byron. And that's saying, let's release something. Let's build a community around that. Let's get infrastructure. Let's learn how to get on exchanges. Let's learn how to write good APIs. Let's learn how to work with third-party uh, devices like uh, other wallets, Ledger, these types of things. And in the process of doing that, we're basically learning the nuts and bolts of our industry and, and how to ship products within our industry in a safe and responsible way. And furthermore, how to work with people who do ship products and make sure that there's a standard user experience and quality amongst that entire setup. And then we call that the Byron era. And it, you know, it's a very successful component. So part of a good roadmap is closing that out and explaining what did we accomplish and what was gained from that investment of time, effort, money. Uh, and then moving forward, you go into other major milestones. So Shelley is the next major milestone, and it's uh, something everybody cares a lot about. And the, the kind of the core uh, item there is decentralization. So basically, first, we have to define that word. We say, what is decentralization? What does it mean? Because there's 500 different ways you could go about it. So what is our particular definition? And what are our high-level goals there? For example, how many stake pools do we want? And how do we decentralize the development process? And how do we decentralize decision making, et cetera, et cetera, these, these kinds of things. And then what are things that are in scope? What are pieces of technology, pieces of features that really ought to get done to make that safe and understandable? And then the next era after that is Gogan. And that's all about programmability, smart transactions. And that's the whole ecosystem. So that's where smart contracts and dApps and these things come from. And really bringing a lot of the innovation that we've been working on the last three years with Plutus and Marlowe and that whole model into the system. Furthermore, it's about extending the system. So we think a lot about, well, how do we start having the conversation about Cardano CL, which is where side chains come into play. And then at some point, the system's going to get overloaded with lots and lots and lots of users and lots of dApps and transactions. And unless we have a scaling solution, we're going to experience the very same victim of success that Ethereum uh, uh, suffered from. So we said, well, we need some era 
where we're going to turn on a lot of the scalability ideas that we've developed. And that's Basho. So that's where Ouroboros Hydra comes into place and also a lot of the layer two scaling ideas. And then finally, we need to be able to hand this thing off financially speaking and control speaking to not just a federation of actors or a lot of people who've meritocratically earned a place in the community, but to basically every single person that cares. And uh, that's what Voltaire is about, is a big discussion about the treasury system and the governance system. So the way that we, we try to structure this roadmap is to say that uh, you know, these these are not necessarily linear, where you do one and you go to the next one and the next one. These things kind of sit on top of each other and they stagger. So, you know, the Byron is nearly done and we're kind of leaving that era. So that's closed out. But Shelley is going to keep going because the goal there is decentralization. And when is that done? Well, there's lots to do there. And even if you accomplish a little bit, uh, you still always have something more to think about, something more to do. And then decentralization changes when you change the underlying consensus mechanism. So when you go from a single shard replicated system like Ouroboros Genesis to Ouroboros Hydra, you could end up having tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people indirectly or directly participating in consensus. Why? Because it speeds up the system. Whereas right now, replication doesn't. You're just improving decentralization there. So a lot of comments and questions. It's the same for Gogan, the same for Basho, and the same for Voltaire. And what we wanted to do was kind of present a logical display that was self-describing and also provided a content roadmap for iterations of the roadmap. So basically, what that means is when you see a feature like wallet, uh, paper wallet, or, or a Boris this, it will run a description, but then it's a placeholder for us to add a link to a blog or a link to a video post or a link to community-generated content. So over time, we can just systematically work our way through the roadmap and keep adding more and more content. The other side of it is that we wanted to have continuous updates. So we were talking about well, when and how should we do that? So every week I get, and David gets, a lot of weekly reports. So uh, at the Wallet back end, they put them right in the GitHub repo. The German uh, repo, the weekly reports are there. Uh, so I see reports on a pretty ba uh, continuous basis, and, and the quality of these reports keeps getting better week by week. So it would be nice to take an aggregation of all of them, maybe monthly or every six weeks, and then just do an update to the community and also follow that with some sort of AMA where people can populate questions and we can try to get to those questions in a meaningful way. And you know, the roadmap website is a really good area to actually put the after effect of that. So when those videos come out, whether they be developer sprints, uh, they be demos that we do, because I see demos and David sees demos every two to four weeks, or it be uh, you know a monthly AMA or something like that, uh, this is a nice place for that. So that was kind of the high-level philosophy of what we put together for the uh, for the roadmap. Uh, and you know, some of it is we have to describe what happened in the past and what did we accomplish, almost like it's a closing report to a client, and we say this is what we've done for you. Then we have to describe where we're currently at, and then major themes that the project is going to be encumbering over the next few years. So decentralization, programmability, scaling, and governance. And these are all major themes. And then to have a path for how we'll describe more and more over time about those themes, and more and more content will materialize. And also, we can see a continuous flow of updates uh, from our product, uh, our project to the uh, to the community. Uh, and we also have things like Medusa, for example, which actually shows the GitHub commits in real time. And you can kind of explore the history of the project and see how we've been evolving it. So it's uh, it's kind of a new thing. It's kind of an experiment. I, I think it's a lot prettier uh, than the old one. But I also think it'll ultimately be far more powerful because it gives a lot of direction, steer, and focus. And it also allows us to every week say, maybe we should fill in some content here. We can kind of pick and choose our battles instead of having this giant monolithic Gantt charty product product chick uh, management thing with percentages and then what does like 75% mean to 92% or something like when I say paper wallets are 70% done what does that even mean it's, it's not a meaningful conveyance it's a kind of a vanity metric and it doesn't reflect well on this instead we can say well what is the target where's our goal and then we can link it to status updates, link it to weekly reports, link it to content, and then people can kind of understand where that's from. And they can understand how it fits in relation to kind of the four remaining things that we have to do in the project. 